welcome home. I'm back home in the house of God. House of God. One day spent in your house. One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship. Be thousands. It's thousands spent on Greek island beaches. Let me tell you why you're here. Why you're here. You're here to be the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. You're here to be light. You're here to be light. Be light. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret. Not a secret. God is not a secret to be cast. To be cast. We are going public with this. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a city hill. On a hill. The mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest, be the highest of all. The most important place on earth. The most important place on earth. Place on earth. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Abundant Life. Thank you for coming this morning. If you're new, we, we appreciate you coming. We hope to see you next week. Amen. Who in the, who's excited to worship the Lord this morning? Yeah. Let's worship the Lord this morning in spirit and in truth, and let's just invite the Father in. And if, you, if you're new here this morning, we like to come up front and worship. And if you're online, we hope you get blessed this morning. We thank Gary for what he's done and his wife, and we thank Joey. This morning, just come up front and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth this morning. We'll just let him invade this place. Go ahead, Joey. Praise the Lord. Well, I welcome you to service today, too. I'm going to start off. Just feel free to uh, do whatever feels great to you, right? We come to bless the Lord, to praise his holy name, thank God for where he's brought us to. Hallelujah. Walking a wayside, lost on a lonely road. And I was chasing the highlight, trying to satisfy my soul. And all the lies I believed in left me crying like the rain. Then I saw lightning from and I've never been the same. Come on, sing with me. I'm going to climb a mountain. I'm going to shout about it. I am a child of love. I'm found a world of freedom. I'm found a friend of Jesus. I am a child of love. Of the fire, but I saw you 
little mountain I am a child of love I found a world of freedom yeah. I am a child of love I'm tall to climb a mountain I'm tall to shine about it I am a child of love I found a world of freedom
shame with a fountain of grace. Put in my way, I know I am yours. I was made for more. Hallelujah. Love that chases the cynical There's a well for every thirsty soul Come and dream On the last breath of a criminal Hear it sung from every hymn No, he's still working miracles Come receive I know it's hard to believe, but he's just that good. Come and taste, you'll see that he's just that good. If you feel well, then, then you know what I mean. Yeah, he's just that good. Oh, he's just that good. I said, praise the Lord. Thought about that second song. My goodness. I don't know. Can you do that? What it talks about, just real quick, what it talks about that we weren't, we weren't created to tend the grave. I'm telling you. That, <clears throat> just stand up to your feet again. Come on now. I wasn't made to be tending a grave. I was called by name. Yes. Born and raised back to life again. Sing it, church. Come on. I was made for more. Come on, lift your hands all over this sanctuary this morning. Sing with all of your heart. So why would I make it in my shame when a fountain of grace is running my way? I know I am yours. 
Put the first back up just for a second. Boy, it says I, I wasn't made. I wasn't made to be tending the grave. I was called by name. I thought about that this morning as Joey and the, and the gang were singing this this morning. Joey and them. My mind raced through the scriptures. I thought about Lazarus. Scripture says that Lazarus was sick, but it doesn't tell us what he was sick from. It just says that Lazarus was sick. And they sent word to Jesus that his friend was sick. Jesus waited four days. And he tells his disciples, we've got to go and see Lazarus because he's asleep. And they said, well, he's doing good, Lord. And Jesus said, you don't understand. Lazarus is dead. And Jesus gets to Bethany, and Martha runs out to meet him. Oh, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would have not died. Jesus says, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life and though he be dead yet shall he live then mary comes running out weeping she says lord if you'd have been here my brother would still be alive jesus began to weep. jesus said take me to where you lay took him to the tomb of Lazarus and Jesus said roll back the stone one person looked at Jesus and said Lord by now he stinks you know there's a lot of people in the church there's a lot of people in the world that they stink they just ain't met Jesus yet Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus was wrapped up in his grave clothes. Now you got to picture this. From the top of his head down to his feet, he's wrapped in linen cloth. He's not walking, he's hopping. He's wrapped up all of a sudden. Lazarus comes hopping out of the grave. Jesus looks at him and says, take the grave clothes off of him. You say, preacher, why are you, why are you telling me this? I come by to tell somebody this morning that you might be in a grave today. You might be in the grave of addiction. You might be in the grave of shame. You might be in the grave of guilt. You might be in the grave of rebellion. You might be in the grave of sickness, whatever grave you might be in. But I come by to tell you, if you'll listen today, you'll hear the voice of resurrection speaking your name today. And you can come out of your grave today because resurrection and life is in the building today. Jesus is here today. The Spirit of God is here today. Somebody needs to give Him praise in this house today. It's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, don't you feel resurrected this morning? Oh, old oh, 
things have passed away. All things have become new. It's Resurrection Sunday. You ought to give Him praise in this house today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Appreciate you, Joey. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the Gospel of John, the 19th chapter, I got a little story to tell. I normally get here about 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. This morning I get up. I listen to my scriptures. And I start to pray. But I can't pray. Just couldn't pray. And the Lord was beginning to deal with me about a message. Now, I was going to preach this message in a couple of weeks as part of this series. But this morning, when I got up and couldn't pray, I went upstairs and I began to put this together. Stacy was coming down. She had just fixed her hair and her makeup and she was heading back down. And I said, Just leave me. I'm almost done, but just go ahead and leave me. So this morning, I want to preach to you. We're still talking about the body being wrapped, but I want to preach to you on the thought position this morning. Position. So if you would stand for the reading of God's Word, it says, After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound him in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Father, we thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the death, the burial, and the resurrection this morning. Father, we confess our faith in Jesus today, that he is the Son of the living God, that he's the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but by him. Father, we thank you for that this morning. I pray, God, that you would anoint every ear to hear, every mind to understand, and every heart to receive this word today. And I pray, God, at the end of this message that people will give their heart to you today, Lord, that lives will be changed and transformed, Lord, not because of me, not because I'm the guy preaching the message, because your Holy Spirit is here and he's moving and working in this place today, Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. And the church would say, Last week we started this series called Wrap the Body. And I believe, as I told you last week, that the Lord has instructed me to teach this during this time. And, and we kicked off last week's talking about how the church should wrap the body of Jesus in love and how we should love one another, that, that, we're, that the world would know that we're his disciples because we have love one for another. And we, we pointed out the fact that Joseph and Nicodemus, they, they cared for the body of Jesus. They took the body of Jesus off of the cross. They wrapped the body of Jesus in linen cloths and spices, and they placed him in a brand new tomb to, to bury him. And so Joseph and Nicodemus not only wrapped the body of Jesus in love, they also positioned the body of Jesus in a borrowed tomb. I want you to write down the word borrowed tomb. Borrowed tomb. See, G Jesus was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph had this tomb made. He made it for himself, but he put the body of Jesus in this tomb. Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. And, and I find that very interesting that he was buried in in a borrowed tomb. Why do I find that interesting? Because Jesus had already predicted his own resurrection. Mark chapter 9 and verse 31 says it like this. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the 
third day. Jesus is placed in a borrowed tomb because it was never, Jesus was never meant to stay in the grave. Somebody needs to shout this morning. Jesus was never meant to stay in the grave. He was going to be raised from the dead on the third day. We see this again in Matthew chapter 12, verses 39 through 40. But he answered and said to them, an evil, adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the was three days and nights in the belly of the great fish. Uh, the King James Version says the belly of the whale. So will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And, 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 so, and so Jesus here is telling us, he's telling us about the prophet Jonah and, and, and how that Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days. And so, and so Jesus is... Uh, Hold on a second. Okay, yep. Yeah. So he's in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights before the whale spewed him out. You remember the story of Jonah? He's, he's, he's called to go down to Nineveh, and he's called to preach the gospel to that wicked city, Nineveh. And he gets on a ship, and he's going to go to Tarshish. But there was a storm that came up, and they threw him overboard, and he was swallowed by a fish. And for three days and three nights, Jonah was in the belly of this great fish or this whale. And the Scripture says that Jonah cried to the Lord from the belly of hell. My goodness. From the belly of hell. And that God heard his voice. Some Bible scholars believe it is possible that Jonah literally died in the fish's belly. And from hell itself cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard. Jesus is drawing a parallel here when he says that as Jonah was in the whale's belly, he's telling them, I'm going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. What is Jesus doing in the heart of the earth? He is preaching the gospel. He is telling them, I am the son of the living God. I am the Christos. I am the anointed one. I am the Messiah. He is preaching the gospel. My goodness. Watch this. And he's telling them, I will rise again just as Jonah was spewed from the well. I'm going to rise again. You, you think it's something that Jonah got spit out of a well and, and, and he went to Nineveh and preached? I'm telling you, this is going to be a greater miracle. I'm going to be resurrected. The stone's going to be rolled away. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verses 14 through 18, He says, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known by my, my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. I wonder who he's talking about there. He's talking about those that are in the bosom of Abraham. Somebody needs to get with me this morning. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, and one shepherd. Listen, what, therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. This command that I received of my father. You know what Jesus is telling them? I'm going to lay my life down, but on the third day I'm going to take it up again. I've got the power to resurrect my own life. Oh, somebody and needs to shout this morning, my goodness, my goodness, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. He said, I'll lay down my life and I'll pick it back up again. Jesus tells us in John, I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have the power to lay it down, but I also had the power to take it up again. Well, I just told you this a while ago, so I'm helping you out, okay? What did Jesus tell Martha? I am the resurrection and the life. I am. Jesus is able to lay his life down, and he is able to pick his life up. My goodness. We see this in Scripture. Are you ready? Watch this in Ephesians chapter 4. Therefore, he says, 
when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive. He's talking about the people that was in the bosom of Abraham. He said, I, I'm going to lead them. I'm going to free them. And gave gifts to men. Now this, watch this. He ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He's saying here before he ascended into the heavens, he first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Before he led captivity captive, he had to go into the lower parts of the earth and preach the gospel. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens that he might feel all things. And then, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Watch this. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. Jesus, when he ascended on high, when Jesus ascended to heaven, he led captivity captive. My goodness. See, they were in Abraham's bosom. He took them from Abraham's bosom to heaven. My, my. See, Jesus first descended into the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went into the bosom of Abraham where the Old Testament saints were housed, and he preached the gospel. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by him. So Jesus preached the gospel to them. In order for them to make it to heaven, they had to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. My, my, my. My goodness. Watch this. You ready? Jesus is dying on the cross. And when he yielded up the ghost, the veil in the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth did quake, the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. Not grave. Graves, plural, meaning more than one. Jesus spent three days in the lower parts of the earth preaching the gospel. When he raised from the dead, he brought with him the Old Testament saints who died without receiving the promise of salvation. Jesus rose first. He is the first fruit of the resurrection. Jesus come out of the grave first. And when Jesus come out of the grave first, all the saints that were in Abraham's bosom came out of the grave after him. And the scripture says that they came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the city and appeared to many. You don't want to talk about a sign. You want to talk about a sign that, 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 that Jesus was the Messiah? When they saw the dead walk in the streets, that was a sign, my goodness. Them dead men and women was walking, but they wasn't walking just to be walking. They was walking their way to glory, that Jesus was about ready to take them to heaven. He was about ready to ascend to the Father in heaven. My goodness, my goodness, what a sign. The saints are not the only thing that Jesus brought with him from the lower parts of the earth. It's not the only thing he brought. He also brought with him the keys of death and hell. He just didn't bring the saints, church. He brought the keys of death and hell. We see this in Revelation 1 and 18. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Jesus has the keys of death and hell. Check this out. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Oh, that ain't good enough. Are you ready? Check it out now. Jesus is on the cross, and the Scripture teaches us in Colossians chapter 2 that while Jesus was on the cross, 
that while Jesus was on the cross, that he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Here's a better way to say that. All of us have sinned. All of us have fell short. All of us have messed up. What Jesus did was he took the arrest warrants that were written out to each of us, and he nailed it to his cross, and he took the arrest warrants out of the way. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Well, hallelujah. See, hell had us, has an arrest warrant. If you're here this morning and you're lost, hell has an arrest warrant with your name on it. But Jesus has already nailed it to the cross. All you got to do is accept the gift of grace. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Oh, I'm telling you. I might be preaching better than you're shouting this morning. So he took the arrest warrants that were as against us. He nailed them to his cross. Then it says that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, and he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. My goodness. Jesus triumphed over the enemy in his crucifixion. And his death. Some people look at that and they think, oh, my Lord, Jesus died. But what happened was it was victory in death and in burial. Watch. He spoiled principalities and power. He stripped them. He raided the enemy's kingdom. He took all of their power, all of their authority, all of their, he took everything from them on the cross. The idea here is the victor's march. You say, well, pastor, what's the victor's march? You see, in those days, when kingdoms would war, and one kingdom being would defeat another kingdom. The king who won would take the defeated king and he would tie him to the back of his chariot. And as he rode through the city, he was taking a lap of victory. But he was dragging the enemy behind him, showing everyone that he was defeated that his kingdom had been spoiled, that he had no longer had any authority, he no longer had any power, that it all had been taken from him. What Jesus did on the cross and what Jesus did in the lower parts of the earth is he took a victor's march and he dragged Satan through the lower parts of the hell saying, I am the king of kings. Come on, somebody. You say, well, how do you know? Because when he came out of the grave, he brought the saints and he brought the keys of death and hell with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Keys. Anybody got a set of keys? Pull your keys out. I I love this little illustration. Pull your house key out. Where's your house key? Pull your house key out. You you know what this, you know what your house key represents? Authority. That you have the authority to walk in your house and you have the authority to walk out of your house and lock it up. Keys open, keys locked. That's all they can do, but they represent authority. Jesus come out with two keys. He come out with the key of death, and he come out with the key of hell. I've got the keys. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't getting me this morning. Listen, you got to understand, Jesus was victorious. You see, when Adam partook of the fruit of good and evil, he brought sin into the world. And when he brought sin into the world, he brought death into the world. And because he brought death into the world, he brought judgment into the world. Oh, my goodness. Help me, Lord. This is why why I love Revelation chapter 5. It's after the church age. It's it's after the resurrection in in the book of Revelation when when we're looking at it. And, and it's got this particular scene in heaven. And the Lord is, the Father's on the throne, and there's a strong angel who's got a scroll in his hand. 
I'm impromptu to him today. He's got a scroll in his hand. And that scroll is sealed. And it's written on both sides. And this strong angel begins to cry out, Who is worthy? Who's worthy to open the book and to loose the seals? Here, and, and most Bible scholars believe that that scroll is the title deed to the earth. Mm. And John was up in heaven, and John said, I looked around in heaven, and I didn't see anybody that was worthy to open the book. I'm way off my notes back there, so y'all just hold on. I'm, I'm way off of them. I didn't see anybody. Then John said, I looked on the earth. He said, I didn't see anybody on the earth. And then John said, I looked under the earth. He said, I didn't see anybody under the earth that was worthy to open the book and to loose the seals. John said, I began to cry much. I began to weep because I couldn't find anybody that was worthy. And John said, one of the elders came up to me. I can, 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 you, can you be John for just a minute? Come on up here, John. Sit down there for a minute, John. Put your head down. Act like you're bawling and crying. He said, one of the elders came up to me. I said, John, why are you crying? John, and, and, and I can hear John saying, well, I see the scroll. I don't see anybody in heaven. I don't see anybody on the earth. I, I don't see anybody under the earth that can open the book. and lose. I, I, I'm, I'm weeping because I don't see nobody. And, and he says, hey, John, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Behold the offspring of, of, of David. He's talking about, behold, Jesus. He is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals. And John said, I looked around in heaven a second time, and all of a sudden I saw a lamb that had been slain. I saw Jesus, and I realized in that moment he's worthy to open the book. He won. He's successful. He won the battle. He's got the keys of death and hell, and now he's got the title deed to the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My goodness. My, 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 my. Man, I can just see it now. Whew. He's got these keys. He paraded Satan around through the bowels of the earth. Why? Here's a good question. Why is this important to us? It's important because it positions the body of Jesus for resurrection. Watch this, Romans 8 and 11. My goodness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal Bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You say, well, what does that mean? That means I was once dead in my sins. But when I accepted Jesus, his Holy Spirit resurrected me. It raised me from, and I moved from death to life, from darkness to light. There was a transformation that took place. My dead man is gone. I am now a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have been made new. I've been resurrected. I've been been changed oh hallelujah my what's this Romans 6 and 5 for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death in the likeness of Jesus' death certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection my goodness, the old man is dead, and we have been raised in the newness of life. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. We have passed from death to life. We have been changed. 
We have been positioned for resurrection. This way, here's what you got to get. When they place the body of Jesus in the borrowed tomb, they positioned him for resurrection because the tomb was only borrowed. It wasn't his tomb. My, my, my. See, listen to me. If you're here this morning and you're saved and you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we have already been changed into the likeness of Christ. But we are getting ready. We're getting ready to be changed. We're getting ready to be raptured. We're getting ready to be caught up. And the dead in Christ are getting ready to be resurrected. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus will, shall we always be with the Lord. There's a resurrection coming. Oh, my goodness. Let me give you this one. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 57. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought the past to saying that is written. If you mark in your Bible, you might want to underline this. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, or O hell, where is your victory. What keys did Jesus bring out of the grave with him? The keys of death and the keys of hell. Oh, grave. Oh, somebody needs to get with me today. See, he says, the sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are positioned for resurrection. Death will have no sting, and the grave will have no victory. Why? Jesus spoiled them on the cross, and in the lower parts of the earth, he took the keys of death and hell and brought them out of the grave with him, and he has them with him now. Oh, my goodness. We need to position the body. Jesus was placed in a borrowed tomb because resurrection was coming. The Scripture teaches us that the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. It teaches us that we are pilgrims journeying through this land but we're just like Abraham, who's looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. This world is not our home. We're, we got another home. We got another citizenship. And it's greater than the citizenship of this earth. It's greater than the citizenship of our nation. It's the citizenship of heaven. It's sonship with the Father. My, 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 Jesus is coming. And we need to position the body of Jesus, the church, for the exit that's about ready to take place. Let's position the church to get ready for the trump, the sound. Joey, would you come back up? Joey and them, I get it right this time. My goodness.
The scripture teaches us that life is but a vapor. We're here one moment and we're gone the next. And the older I get, the more I realize how short time is. I look back on my life and I'm thinking, just seems like yesterday. Just seems like yesterday. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, just seems like yesterday. If you're here today with every head bowed and every eye closed and no one looking around, if you're here today and you're lost without Jesus, I won't call you out. I won't come back and get you. I won't embarrass you. I won't, I won't. I'll ask the church to pray for the person that raised her hand. But if you're here this morning and you're lost without Jesus and you know that you need Jesus in your life, I'm going to ask that you raise your hand high enough for me to see it and hold it up long enough for me to acknowledge it. There's two hands, three hands, four hands, five hands, six hands, seven hands, eight hands. nine hands anybody else that would raise their hand this morning and say pastor I'm lost without Jesus he's not the Lord of my life if you raised your hand today or you didn't raise your hand but you would like to make things right with Jesus today you would like to have your resurrection on resurrection Sunday because you will pass from death to life you will be changed today You'll be a new creature. Old things will pass away and all things will become new. If that's you today, I want to give you an invitation to slide out of your seat and make your way to the altar as the church prays for you this morning. Will you come? Will you come? You raised your hand this morning. You know you need to give your life to Jesus. Will you come? Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day. Will you come? Will you come? Today's your day. Will you come? Will you come? You raised your hand. You didn't raise your hand. Will you come? Today is the day of salvation. Norma, would you come up and pray with these ladies, please? Anybody else, you want to come today? You want to come and Give your life to Jesus today. Will you come today? Come on. There was more people that raised their hand. Will you come today? Jesus is here waiting on you. He's calling your name today. Say, will you come? Will you come? He's knocking on the door of your heart today. Say, let me in. Let me in. Will you come today? Will you come today? and give your life to Jesus. Will you come? Anybody else this morning, will you come? Will you come? Will you come today and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life? Will you come? Here's another person. Amy, will you pray with this person or Norma, either one? Will you come? Today's your day. Today's the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, right now, right now. My goodness, I feel the Lord in this house today. Will you come today? Will you come? Oh, thank you, Father. Will you come today? Oh, Lord, will you come? Anybody else, will you come? Tears of joy is flowing at this altar this morning. Will you come? Today's the day of salvation. Will you come? Let Jesus get you out of that grave this morning. Will you come? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Will you come? Will you come? Anybody else? Joy, you can go ahead and sing that next song if you want to. I'm going to ask the church to stand as we sing this next song. If at any time during this song you want to come, we'll be right here waiting for you. 
to come. Will you come? Will you come?
If you know the Lord provide, come on, give him a great shout of praise today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord today. We do want to take uh, a couple minutes here and take up our tithes and our offerings today. My goodness. Isn't God good? I hope this service has blessed your heart today. My goodness. But uh, for me personally, it's always an honor and a privilege to be able to give back to the Lord. I believe that, <clears throat> that tithing is taught from the very book, beginning of the book to the end of the book. Uh, I, see it in the, I see it before the law, during the law, and after the law. Uh, Abraham gave a tenth to Melchizedek. Moses taught us in the law to tithe. And then we see in the book of Hebrews, it says that uh, here men receive tithes, but there he receives them of who is witness that he lives, talking about Jesus. And so we should pay our tithes uh, to the Lord. They belong to God. They don't belong to us, the first 10%. And, uh, and so we do ask that you do that in obedience to the Lord today. And anything above that is considered an offering. And so we want to take up our tithes and our offerings today. And then after, after, as we're taking it up, I've got a couple announcements that, uh, that I want to make. Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to be able to give today, God. We ask you to bless those that give. We ask you, God, that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing that they do not have room enough to receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, and amen.